Okay, we're going to turn this proxy into a detailed model. Uh, I love to start large to small, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of work out the big shapes, and then we'll go into the panel lines a little more details. I'm looking at the big shapes. The one thing that I'm missing here is the scoop, kind of thin look here, making sure that the structure is all in here, and the uh, scoop out and funnel for the rockets and the air funnel here. And then once I get these kind of overall shapes worked out, I'll, I'll put in the panel lines and we'll work out how we can get the height detail uh, of the panel lines. But the first step is still design sculpt process where I'm working large to small and just really want kind of overall design rather than the area in which uh, I'm doing too much detail. So uh, the first thing, let's get that scoop here and just kind of try to figure out where that shows up. That looks about right. I'm masking off the other areas and then I can use the clip curve brush. Uh, the clip curve brush is a one of the control shift brushes. And if you notice I hold down control shift, I get a different set of brushes. Uh, clip curve is very useful. Uh, what it does is it, instead of cutting or slicing or anything like that, it just flattens everything to this shaded line. So if I'm doing this, you can see everything just flattens down. It's not cutting though, it's actually just squishing all the polygons down, uh, which I, it might be uh, really beneficial for this piece here because I'm not I'm trying to get the perfect cut on this piece. Uh, the other thing about Clip Curve is if you hit Alt, you get a little uh, tether uh, of an angle, a little anchor point of an angle. So I could do a straight line, that's a piece of cake, but if I wanted to do an angle, I can tap the middle with Alt, and then I've got kind of an angle that I can stretch out. This is going to give me that scoop look that I, I want to go with uh, for this. I'm going to a little, little too thin here. So, inside line, it's enough weight. There, that should be good. Okay, so I'm going to hit Alt on the clip curve in the middle of my curve. It gives me a little curve. Uh, again, it's to the shaded line. Everything flattens out to the shaded line. So if I did it, if I dragged it the other way, you notice I rotated around that line changes. Uh, the shaded line is where everything flattens out. Also, if you let go of Control Shift, once you've got the clip curve, you can pull down space and move it around, at least in the version of the brush that I have. Okay, so I, I cut the aileron. I kind of accidentally clipped a little bit of the end there, so I'm going to make sure that I'm not interrupting the, uh, the overall shape. I just want a little bit of a scoop still having that smooth clean shape. It gives me uh, the overall shape and as long as the airfoil feels good, uh, what I'm looking for here is like a smooth flowy feel. Uh, one of the things that can help is uh, polish is really good at this, but polish is an interesting brush because it just kind of softly uh, gets rid of certain things. But I find my favorite is Trim Dynamic because Trim Dynamic will uh, be a little more aggressive. Polish doesn't really give me full control. It just kind of gently touches uh, the piece. So my favorite uh, to really make a flattened uh, uh, facet or any kind of flattened plane uh, to use Trim Dynamic uh, as a brush or Clip Curve as a kind of a control shift tool when we're really uh, able to flatten it out to some sort of camera perspective line. In this case, uh, I'm just trying to smooth out the top of this airfoil. And uh, sometimes, you know, turning on the line fill gives you a little bit of a good uh, understanding of, of your curve. Um, we can see there is some fun interactions here where we have, it goes in and out. I want to get that into the the final, so we're going to make sure that we bring those together. So, let's see, I'm doing some smoothing. The thing is, this doesn't, it's not going to give me the best results because of this kind of Z remesh or whatever, however this model is made. It's got some, some issues being stretched around. So let's take a look at the geometry, see if I can just clean it up just a little bit by using uh, the Z remesher. Turn on line fill so I can see my polygons. I'm not that interested in, in a perfect polygon, I just want something that's a little cleaner than what I have. It looks okay, this concentric circle is good. I should actually be able to smooth that to get a little easier. Uh, control. Notice, 
Sometimes when you smooth, the uh, volume disappears. It's something to be aware of. But if you can uh, work it out just right, where you smooth and then either not losing volume or come back with the inflate brush, that is a very uh, wonderful brush because it just kind of brings back volume as if you're like blowing it up with a balloon. But you don't always want things to feel so balloony, but in this case, a balloon actually pretty close to the feeling of balloon. Um, looks like the Z rematch gave me an issue down here. Uh, that's from that's fun. so um, smooth it out. That that has everything to do with the clip curve that I just did. And if I go back uh, to it, see there's just something funky happening in that that one area. It might be because it got a little too thin. Sometimes if it's too thin, a Z remesher doesn't know how to deal with it. So. A, a way of dealing with uh, thinness is also with the inflate brush where you're kind of expanding the surface just a little bit. See, somehow the end of it got a little, little weird. Seems to fix it. And then let me try the Z remesher one more time. And I know a uh, wing generally has a pretty flat edge, so I do want a flat edge eventually, but um, if it gets too thin, uh, the Z-Ring Mesher is not happy about it. Now that I, I uh, inflated it a little bit, I can go back and use the trim dynamic. It kind of acts like a chisel or, or just a flattening brush. It does a wonderful job. Uh, flatten is another brush, but I find the trim dynamic just works better. Okay, so that gives me um, kind of the overall shape. That's that's good. That's what I was going for. Now uh, I can divide it. Uh, that's one thing I can do. I just want to make sure this back area feels good. Looks like this back area is going to be a long structure uh, or yeah, kind of flatter area, and I have it a little more angled. So I'm probably just going to move. These two moves, move topological and move, the difference is move topological only moves what's connected to a, a model, a shell, the polygon shell. Uh, so in this case, these are two separate objects so you don't really notice, but if they were all one object, uh, let's see if these are, no, they're all different objects. Uh, but uh, move topological only selects a single shell at a time, whereas move, just the move tool will select multiple objects at once. Uh, at least uh, within a sub tool. These are all different sub tools, so that is another uh, effect. I just, just want to show that we have multiple sub tools. The uh, move uh, will grab multiple, but if you or multiple objects in a single sub tool, the move will grab multiple objects, but if you're using the move top logical, it can just grab one object. Uh, and that can be useful, uh, both useful. Okay, let's go back to the move. Now I wanted to just make this a little more flat, and sometimes it's good to draw these out in, uh, in a um, more isometric view and everything, getting wing shape, there's all kinds of really obvious uh, shapes we can just deal with with drawing out the shape, but not having a isometric myself because I made up this model, we'll just uh, go with my own Works. Okay, so that's the overall wing shape that I want. Now I'm going to start to think about panel lines, uh, cutting into it, how it integrates into this area, how the, the rider and its foot integrates. So I'm going to do a little bit of work with that and um, we can use another tool that I use all the time in more organic modeling is the uh, clay buildup tool. Now this tool is good for just adding volume. You notice it is kind of chunky in its uh, application. I'm going to divide this object. It's, nice uh, it's kind of chunky in its application. You see a lot of stair stepping when you're drawing that brush over. It's a way to fix it. It's, um, let's see, it's a stroke, I believe. And the modifier. Sure, it's the whole distance. So, let's try this at 8. Let me put it to 8. Yeah, 
much cleaner. So 8 gives you more resolution and more application of a brush stroke, especially with the build up. Other things that we need to do with brushes very consistently is turn off the auto mask, or turn on the back face mask. Auto mask. This will make it so that I'm not drawing behind my object. So I'm going to come in here and just add a little bit of uh, sculptural details, uh, maybe switch over to an easier to see um, shader, the, this green metallic is nice because it still have a little bit of backlighting. I also notice uh, a lot of the brushes, they have that little tail of a red line, uh, that is the lazy mouse stroke, which can be useful for uh, very, very clean line control, but I don't need it at this moment. I like to turn it off. Also, L turns it off on the keyboard. So here I, I want to create this like little bit of a fin shape in the back so that you have this extra volume. You just got to sculpt it in a way that gives it that aerodynamic shape, the kind of shape that you see in an airplane or a really fast car or motorcycle. integrate the wing and this fuselage at some point. Right now it's nice to have them separate because I get those real clear uh, differences in the uh, model's form. Right now I'm just doing some massaging on the model itself, trying to get a really uh, nice clean shape that'll look good with reflections on it and stuff. There's a whole bunch of parts of this piece that will be missing, will be hidden uh, but um, I do want to make sure as much as that all the, the visible parts are as clean as possible. And this is not a final model, it's still, we're still dealing with proxy, but I wanted to kind of start to create the final um, surface feel. We're getting closer and closer to a final surface. scoop needs to follow the overall look. I, I think one thing that's always really important when sculpting is to check all of your angles. Every time you do a major change, just take a look at your angles. I, I want to fix up this back uh, and thruster uh, funnel. It, it got a little kind of sausagey, so I'm going to use clip curve to just kind of give it a nice clean back. Uh, so there's some other model that what this is connected to, but I don't need it anymore. So I'm gonna split, um, split that little piece off. Uh, best way to do it: turn it into its own subtool. Select it with uh, masking and hit Control W. Now I can isolate it, hide it. As it's hidden, uh, I'll go into the subtools and go with the split and say split hidden, and then it's one piece. Uh, is absolutely useless. Let's delete it. This guy is an old uh, Z sphere dude, uh, which I cleaned up a lot since, so I'm gonna leave him there. But uh, this is the guy that we're actually gonna cleaned up. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, now with this guy, there are some things that I need to think about, like the way that his knees integrate. Uh, so maybe uh, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, this overall shape. I want this feeling of like a, a little bit of this like World War II airplane era look uh, with this UFO kind of uh, skin. So anything that I can do to kind of keep these these uh, big mouth shape, that's going to be cool. But, but I do want it to feel like a motorcycle as well. So we got to figure out how to integrate this. And it might just be making this top area a little thin. Zigzaggy. That looks cool. That actually has a cool uh, in and out kind of X. Alright, and then still pull that knee in a little better. There we go. That's not going to be through the 
No. Some space for those controls. And then this piece here, this is a whole separate piece. Uh, it's like the, the fuselage and the aileron. Uh, I'm not counting on anything underneath it ever be existing, but uh, this top piece up here, that's going to be important. So let's get the shape of that right. to it as it kind of goes around the sides here. Um, I'll start off with a clip curve to get this clean surface. Bring down Alt to get the anchor points for the clip curve. This should flatten it out. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it will uh, do a pretty good job. And then you can kind of pull down the middle and pull up the sides. That's what I want. Okay, so that gave me something. Let's bring this down a little bit. Now shift for smooth. Okay, and then I'm gonna give the dude a little more anatomy. His, his foot is in existence, so let's pull out his big toe. Does need hands, but his hands might be buried at the moment. Nice shoe shape. Uh, the bottom of feet, it's always really easy to think about them. It's like a Dr. Scholl's foot pad kind of thing, because that's a shape that we've seen before. And uh, we can memorize and create that for the sole of the foot, of the finished foot, even though it's got a shoe or not, usually it kind of has that shape. Move it out and bring it back. Inflate it a little. Okay. Uh, Alright, a little better. Uh, definitely still a little, a little flat. Bring out some of the look rather than just a thin toe. Um, and then, you know, helmet's not good yet. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of more time on the rider, but uh, today the main focus is going to be the UFO stingray here. Okay. Uh, okay, so one thing I want to do is bring in a little space for his foot to not get cut off. space there, and then um, probably going to have some sort of block uh, for his foot to exist on. Also, we need a little hole right there for his toe to go down, so let's maybe, maybe we bring his foot just back up a little bit, say that he has to kind of work with the geometry of this ship so that he doesn't Into shape itself. Holding down Alt moves your move tool, and then I'm just hitting the uh, W E R for the move tool draw. Q W E R. Uh, just giving me all my move options. These that's a different type of move than the brush move. Uh, the move gizmo is actually uh, moves a whole object or whatever you have selected, rather than brush is more like a brush with a fall off and various uh, um, uh, brush uh, effects rather than the move gizmo which is much more like Maya's uh, move gizmo. Let's see there's some fall off. This, this move is more like soft selection or the move tool in, in the brushes in Maya rather than the move gizmo. Down, give it really kind of cool. 
dynamic look, and then what I think I'll do is I'll add this like little insert of a, a shape to, to give his foot something to land on. I'm going to use the insert brush, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the insert brushes that are already made, those are great, uh, but I will show how to make an insert brush if we wanted to make our own, uh, which in this case I, I, was, uh, I think I did uh, rivets at some point. You can also, with ZBrush, uh, put all of your brushes on key commands, and I do highly recommend that. I won't do that while I'm teaching because I want everybody to see what it is, that, what brushes are that I'm working. So, uh, but I, I recommend anybody that wants to uh, really get into ZBrush, the um, key command, setting up your brushes in the key commands is just a fabulous way of working. So, let's make it a little short, let's make it wider. Okay, so now that's kind of interesting. A little kind of thing to rest his foot on, and we can imagine that the biggest problem this person has is not just getting shot down by aircraft over Lake Huron, but uh, also uh, not having a seatbelt. someday when we. Not today. Any safety regulations for this guy? Okay. Um, so just, yeah, I just wanted to place him a little better, make sure he was right. The helmet needs all kinds of design work for the face, but now we've got an understanding of where his feet go, where his hands kind of go. He's probably going to be dealing with some sort of handlebar. Uh, I could do that too with this piece. I can insert just a cylinder. Draw the cylinder uh, to be really long. If you notice, it, it wants to scale up the whole object, both cylinders at once. Uh, if we turn on local symmetry, it'll give us the ability to scale each independently in the uh, mirror um, system. So uh, now I just want to shrink this down, maybe give them some cool handlebars. I would love to design these, make them a little more interesting than just uh, cylinders, but if I made them, be able to just give it a little fun twist or something. Grab the ends. Grab the ends. Rotate them. Resetting my gizmo so I have my rotation. That's, that's handlebars. Uh, can we do something a little cooler? Kind of up handlebars. Let's see what his arms are doing anyway. They kind of feel more like that motorcycle handlebar, so maybe it's like this, but his hands are grabbing down here and these are kind of wrapped around his hands. That would work. Pull up his hands so he's not hiding. Uh, I am using the um, the poly groups. Uh, also, if you ever accidentally try to insert a poly mesh when they're smoothing, uh, it gets real mad. So uh, it does not like that. So we move over to move, and then we're going to um, bring back the, the front plate. Where's that front plate? There we go. So I was using uh, poly groups. So that's what's happening when I'm uh, making things disappear real quickly. Is the different colored groups? You can hold down Control and Shift and click on them, and they'll disappear. Really useful for managing. Uh, I would love to give this guy just at least a fist, not necessarily even a hand, but a fist so that uh, it's, you know, it's got something to work with. I don't really need the higher versions yet of this guy, so I'm not going to come just make him this fist. Lost. 
these might be uh, when it's insert this insert tool when it's got an H next to it that means half uh, and that's not what I want so let's go to the insert brushes and just the regular primitives rather than the primitives H those are the hemispheres and halves so that <laughs> would have messed me up so um, also a capsule is fine cylinder is definitely the shape of the fist but capsule is fine because uh, maybe not I'm holding right and the mouse is going to move this back and forth. I'm just use an insert cylinder. Yeah, because that, that's got the, the uh, mesh detail that I need. The capsule didn't have any spans in the center. So. Like those old uh, motorcycle toys of like the 60s and 80s, they would always have a little motorcycle just like this, uh, a motorcycle guy, and the little fist would be something that locked into the handlebars. Okay, so really, really simple shape that I'm thinking of at first, but of course, we you know a little bit of anatomy. We're going to know there's going to be like kind of a flatness to the front part of his knuckle. Uh, if he's aiming his knuckles down, maybe more this shape. And then uh, he's going to have a thumb on the inside, so pull this kind of inner part out, smooth that, that's where his thumb area is going to be. This is all pinky and big finger and very little fingers and all the fingers. I'm just going to have a thumb as a capsule just for now. Again, the local symmetry is helping me do the uh, two sides at the same time, rotating and scaling. So this is something that'll work for now, but uh, eventually it'll definitely go in do a lot more. I just wanted to uh, believe that there was actually some sort of hand there. Well, this will do for now for the this is still in proxy mode, but um, so I want to get all of the forms worked out. So I kind of rushed this in, looked like um, a Dynamesh together, which is actually exactly what I wanted. I didn't mean to do that, but if Dynamesh is on and it's yeah, if it's yellow like this and you hold down control and drag down, it redistributes all the mesh. Uh, that's actually okay. Uh, but I could make this a little prettier before we do that. It's got a little knob, we can even make it a little more interesting, but it's got a, something to play with, and we can finish off the whole design now that we have uh, that foot press. Knees 
not crushing through it. There we go. Okay, oh yeah, and we can look at the bottom. Why not? Uh, it's going to give us some understanding of things that are missing. It looks like this piece, the bottom and the top are very different. Uh, so I want to kind of bring some of the whatever's going on at the top back into the bottom. Okay, uh, the other thing is that mouthpiece in the front, it's, uh, we're, we don't have anything going on with there. Uh, we also probably want to integrate this into the fuselage as well, this, this piece here. And it doesn't look like it's separate from this mesh, uh, although it's probably a different shell. And if it is a different shell, it's really easy to auto groups uh, and isolate these groups. Uh, now, in auto groups with mirror on, but uh, I can isolate both of them. Now they're the same group, uh, and we can put them in with the fuselage, which is where they should be. But before I do that, I do want to uh, figure out the front mouth piece of the fuselage. I'm going to be a little flatter. That. That's cool, but actually that angle is fun. Uh, it does have an interesting kind of nose thing going on here. The skull. Let's see what that looks like. This piece. Yeah. Now this whole time. Okay. 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 So let's just do it right up to the edge. Yeah, it's important. Wanted to kind of feel like an airplane. And then these pieces, uh, they were supposed to kind of go into the fuselage, but you can also do some things where if they're on their own, they, they're going to be a little easier to deal with, so isolate them. Now I can split hidden with the wing and this piece of separate pieces. Uh, so a fun thing to do is like, okay, I got them in the right spot, but they don't have any of the right shape. I can inflate them and then divide them a few times. And now they're all spongy, that's not exactly what I want, but I could come in with Clip Curve and get a much cleaner uh, look. I'm going to turn off Perspective because it gets a little confusing with Perspective, but now I want I want a little more of like a chiseled look. Double tapping all it gives you a corner rather than a curve when it comes to Clip Curve. And yeah, this will work for the chisel what I'm going for. Oh, it doesn't work on insides. It's one of the issues with mirroring and mirroring. So I can do it to the outside. But if I wanted to do it in the inside, I have to do a, I have to create that, uh, a separate subtool for that. But I can do that. It's just uh, let's do the outside first. Yeah, I just wanted these to kind of feel like maybe plate metal uh, is how they were put together. Side. Let's do a yeah, see it. clip curve doesn't work that way, but there is some other curves like a uh, knife curve that will slice things as well. It might cause some other issues, but let's see what happens. It doesn't like the insides. Let's try slice curve. Well, the other way we can do it is by uh, coming in there with Trim Dynamic. And one, when it comes to really getting in there with uh, clean, uh, sh uh, like a chiseled shape, 
Uh, I find that one of the best ways is a little mix between trim dynamic and dam standard. Dam standard cuts into things and draws a nice like slicing line. And what I like to do is using the um, dam standard and trim dynamic together and uh, clip curve as well. Not slice curve, but clip curve. Clip curve will work if you have division. So that's actually also awesome about it. Uh, but what I'm looking for at this point is I want to kind of flatten some things out. So I'm going to use trim dynamic, kind of flattening this uh, this facet out. And I can use dam standard to kind of cut in a crease. Um, trim dynamic again to flatten out the other side. You can also mask the areas so you don't affect the other area. Works okay. Um, this is kind of certain limitations that ZBrush does have. Uh, we can get in there and really uh, fix it. It just takes a little bit more effort than it would have just taken a box model from Maya. Again, there are always a million ways to do something, and sometimes the ZBrush way is, is just fine. All right, now I wanted to do a uh, more of a mouth system and maybe an integration with these uh, wings. So um, one of the first things we can do is point it out, getting these shapes right. So even though I've already done some work on these shapes, I can still clean them up a little bit. You notice it's a little softer on the bottom, a little tighter on the top. Uh, the middle has a kind of a funny angle. Something that's not quite right, probably because they had perspective on when I did this. Do it one more time. Okay, that's a little cleaner all the way around. If I wanted to uh, tighten an edge, a wonderful tool is a pinch. Um, and that, let's see, make sure I'm categorizing all these. Uh, here we go. So, yeah, uh, one, I, I talked about damn standard, clip curve. Um, Trim dynamic and dam standard work really well together. Um, then uh, clip curve for flattening things. Uh, slice curve we'll get into in a minute. And then the um, pinch brush uh, is really wonderful. Uh, clay buildup also. Okay, so uh, going back to ZBrush, I want to. Can even take this into Maya. We can rebuild it all, but it's just it's not even flattened on this angle. Didn't want to integrate them a little more into the fuselage, so maybe we move them in a little bit. Just right, I just want a little more of a fun angle, not a flat angle on the front of this. Alright, I'll probably bring that into Maya for 
another look, uh, but yeah, it's just hard to get the, the chiseled look uh, with uh, ZBrush. It always wants to fight you a little bit. But I can use it in Maya as a snapping tool. Okay, so uh, the next. The other thing I could do is I could isolate one, and without thinking about them as being two, I could just do one. Because uh, mirror does mess up a lot of things. It's actually very challenging. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just isolate one side, turn off mirror for a second, and then now I can focus on this without thinking about both. I'm going to delete a lot of the geometry redone meshes. Let's try that one more time. So, uh, first off, I'm just going to inflate it. Now I want to get these angles right. I need more geometry. Now I can do this side without worrying about the other side. Honestly, one of the best tricks that ZBrush has is isolating your objects so you can work on the Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. A little more chunky. shapes and ZBrush over it. Maya is just so simple. Okay. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave that in and we'll bring it in Maya to do a double take on it. Okay, uh, let's get rid of the other side. Let's see what happens when I just do here and weld. Okay. Grab the wrong side, and when that happens, all you have to do is go to deformations and flip it, uh, and then it'll grab, it'll mirror the side that you really want. I'm gonna reevaluate it at some point, just want to get something that does better. And now we've got mirrored objects, we'll just move on from there. I wanted to also uh, just give this uh, piece a mouth, it's a little bit of some sort of it's a little bit of some sort of mouth shape just to get started and one really easy way to do that is with slice what slice is really good at if everything's working correctly is uh, turning um, uh, a really clean sub tool uh, uh, polygroup Sorry, clean, uh, creating a really clean polygroup of sluts. Um, yeah, usually you get a nice clean polygroup separation. I'm not seeing it there. So let me try this with slice curve. Let's just see if that's happening. It isn't happening, and I wonder why. I bet there is something with that brush that is turning off that option. Slice does give you a separate subtool. 
Oh, uh, knife? Is, is knife doing that? No. Not doing the slice. Slice should give you a separate sub tool. Sure, it's not trim. That trim does a whole other thing, but slice should cut right through and give you a nice clean separation of sub tools. Sorry, polygroups. Subtools and polygroups, very different. Polygroups are just in a single object, subtools are kind of more like objects in a subtool outliner. Polygroups are what I'm trying to fix here. Yeah, it's not. Usually, slice will give it a nice separation between polygroups and symmetry. symmetry. How about if I just change polygroups? Yeah, I don't know why it didn't want to start with my polygroup system. Let's try it again. Slice. There we go. Uh, sometimes ZBrush can be just a little finicky, but this is actually really great. Slice circle should be able to give me a mouth uh, to the front here. Uh, it will kind of cut through everything, including the stuff behind it. So let's give it a try. Uh, it seemed to do just fine there, but you see it grabs the stuff behind it. I don't really want to slice through that quite yet. Uh, so there's another tool that we can use, which is uh, just grabbing um, polygroup with uh, uh, shading, or sorry, the, uh, the mask, just control, uh, creating this mask. I will create a little shape that is where I want my mouth to be. Masking is incredibly useful. You can do this thing with masking where you uh, draw the rough shape, and if it's in the right spot, you hold down control and alt and either tighten it, uh, by clicking on it, or this is control and shift. Tighten it, clicking on it, or click off of it, and it should soften it. Um, actually, uh, this this seems to work well. Uh, control and alt will tighten it. Control and shift, I think, uh, softens it. But now I've got a little tighter uh, mouth shape, and what I'm going to do is turn this into a separate subtool. And if you notice, it's kind of chunky around the edges, not very clean. So why don't I use a little trick, uh, under geometry we have the uh, group loops, edge loop uh, tab, and we're going to hit um, group loops, try that, see what that looks like, gives a nice clean separation, that's good. We'll try panel loops, see if that gives us something. Panel loops is cool, but it does seem to break your object off of the old object. And then uh, group loops give you some great loops, but it will give you too many loops. Because it's trying to create panel lines in between everything. I'm just, I just want one in between these two panels, so that'll be good. Um, it is size dependent. This is actually a wonderful tool, but it can be an issue where the loops are too small or too big, depending on the size of your object. And I think you can change some stuff with the thickness. Let's try it again. Yeah, it doesn't seem to change the group loops thickness, uh, which is, is a funny thing, but uh, I think that's set up for the panel line, so I can, I can turn a polish. That's just going to be a different uh, softness. Anyway, it does give me, you'll notice there's a separation, nice green line separating that. So that's cool, uh, and because what I can do now is isolate this, and because I had a, a separator group, I should be able to... There, but I should be able to separate the uh, piece, that, and move it back. And then I have an extrusion of some sorts. Uh, there's also uh, many other ways to do extrusions. Um, one of the ways uh, that let's see if it still works, but you used to be able to just isolate it by uh, masking the point. You can do it extrude like this with control. That still works. Yeah, it does give you uh, extrusions. So that's great. So now I've got a hole for the mouth. This is definitely that kind of manta ray look that I'm going for, and um, it's just gonna help me when I bring this into Maya. Got this piece uh, sticking out through, so I'm gonna make sure that that one little area is not height uh, sticking out through the.
this could easily be trimmed down in my head. I just want to make sure it's not there. Okay, and now I can think about the um, panel lines. So I want to do the panel lines of the wings a little um, more aggressively and, and kind of more uh, with more control than everything else. So I'm going to do uh, two versions. I'm going to do a, a design sculpt of the panel lines and then I'm going to go in and, and uh, manipulate the wings so that we have a separation of the um, uh, geo and actually have a good clean geo to create panel lines. But first off, I just want to design sculpt. One of the easiest ways to do that is with the damn standard brush. Um, I'm going to duplicate this wing and start smoothing it, divide it a few times, hide the old division, the old uh, original. And I'm going to use damn standard because it is just a really quick way of drawing, uh, slicing into the model. Uh, if we do a kind of get looks pretty clean, but if you if you get dots instead of a clean stroke, you can go to your stroke and play with your um, modifier, your roll distance, but the line seems to be just fine. I'm going to leave it the way it is and make it a little smaller, uh, but now I can match the panel lines for my design. Okay, so we go like this. Um, I'm going to add something like that. On. And we have one here. Like that. And another cool thing is with Maya's or C brush, you have a uh, hold down, you click and then hold down shift. It'll drag the straight line. That's going to give you a straight line. Uh, it just might not. It might not be in the right plane. But it will should give you a straight line if you let go of the shift. Click, hold that, click, hold down shift. Click, hold down shift, drag, and then let go of shift. Pretty cool. Let's try it again. And then there's this curve here. This one's important. Okay, so quick kind of design of my panel lines. There'll be some variations for sure. This will give me something that I can kind of work off of. And um, one of the things I wanted to try this round was I've got this other mesh uh, that is not uh, doesn't have any design on it, but it could um, actually uh, we might be able to break up the poly um, poly groups in this one to, to match the panel lines using slice. So slice, remember it has a circle. Uh, we can cut through an object, and it'll like give us uh, different poly groups. I think it only works if we have multiple poly groups to begin with. Yeah. Liking this maybe because of divisions. It can sometimes be an issue with slice. Yeah, it doesn't like the divisions. So this piece uh, is is kind of a testing object. So I don't want to lose it. I'm going to duplicate it and hide it. And then now we've got that design sculpt in here as well. That's it there. So let's see if I turn on. Yeah, okay. Can you turn on uh, transparency? Um, you can kind of see the design sculpt underneath it. Uh, but what I want to do here is try the slice curve to see if I can get uh, my panel lines to break up where I want them to. And uh, yeah, we'll just turn off solo this, turn off the line, and then, yeah, ghost is nice because I can see my reference underneath. So now I'm going to draw slice curve, uh, tap an uh, alt to give an anchor point for the curve, there we go, uh, this might not be mirrored, but that's okay, I can mirror it later, so 
Let's see, control shift, drag, tap alt, there's my curve, there we go, and then here, this one, uh, it also really helps if you isolate the object, because then you're, you know you're not overlapping other uh, panels that you made. There we go, that's one, now I can, let's see, get that a little cleaner, there. Uh, now I can isolate that, and we can do, let's see, let's do it this way, where and then come through the aileron here, double tap, and that gives me a nice corner. Now I can isolate this one there and this one here. Now, probably do have the same uh, panel lines from top to bottom, and that's cool because uh, I didn't have to do them twice. It's not usually how planes work, but uh, this actually <laughs> works out just fine. Uh, then the only one thing is in the front. There's this big circle, so let's put that there. So I'm going to use a uh, slice uh, circle for that that one. Okay, now I've, I've got all my panel lines in there. Uh, that's pretty cool. A uh, couple of ways that I can kind of turn them into geo uh, would be... Um, um, Extruding, that's actually really fun in this situation. I can use the Z modeler, and the Z modeler works by looking at whatever you have selected or your mouse is over. Uh, and if you right click on it, it gives you all these options. So I'm going to use the extrude, and I want to use polygroup island, which means I'm isolating the polygroup uh, shell, and then we can extrude. So this it might be a way I could create some panel lines. Uh, there are some issues. It does seem like uh, Q uh, or the Z modeler just doesn't doesn't always know exactly how to handle certain areas, uh, which is totally a reason to go into Maya over over this. Uh, and then the other one would be um, we can try using group loops here. Uh, so that one we're going to bring down the number of divisions between the loops to two or even one, and then just see what it looks like. So now, uh, what you have is panel lines and then a group in between the panel lines. Now, the polish doesn't look great. It's a little wiggly, so that would be another reason I might end up in Maya. Uh, but uh, what I could easily do, just to test all this out and see what it looks like, is extrude uh, this middle uh, polygroup. I turn off symmetry. Middle polygroup and extrude it down. And now what I've got is an extruded panel line in wherever I wanted it. And that's actually pretty cool. I'll go into certain areas which um, wasn't in the polygroup island. Uh, but if you notice, I'm not extruding the panels out. I'm extruding the panel line in. Uh, that actually is really helpful. So it works. Uh, it's a little funky. And this is because of uh, polygonal... Um, information can be a little tricky in ZBrush. Even though we made really clean lines, uh, there's just a, a fight when it comes to triangles and all kinds of stuff. So that's why we would take it into uh, ZBrush. Uh, so we take a ZBrush model and bring it into Maya and use PodDraw to go over the shell of this piece, which is something uh, that I can't do. The uh, other thing I wanted to talk about was like this extra piece here. I do want that to uh, extrude. And how do we do that? Well, one of the ways was to add a little piece of geo and then um, kind of dynamesh it into uh, this, this piece here. So I, I, it's the exhaust piece that I want. I'm just going to find a cube, the insert uh, brush, and just add a cube here. And I'm really only thinking about one side of this wing at this point because of the, um, uh, the symmetry wasn't working to slice. So side at a time. I can you know, let's uh, rotate this so it's squared up with flight direction.
So this is what I'm looking for. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be perfect in this, uh, but what I'll do is I'll take this uh, thing, bring it into Maya, and we will get a really clean uh, model of uh, set up of that. Uh, so now if I do want to take this into Maya and say I've, I've got everything kind of the way that I want it and I want to do a quad draw over this to give me cleaner geo, um, it's going to be really easy if I bring in an optimized uh, uh, model in Maya rather than a really, really dense one. But the first thing is I want to get everything that I'm bringing into Maya isolated together. Uh, turn off the writer for now. Go ahead and turn on the ones that I want to use. It's a good design. Uh, the sculpts, I still kind of like that one, but I did do the panel on it. This is the one I'm not using. I'm not using that one. Use this one. Okay, so I'm turning off the rest, turn on that one. Now, uh, what I'll do is look at what I want, and we'll say. Merge visible, which uh, in the sub tool, merge visible will give us just kind of pop this into a new uh, sub tool altogether, that's, or a new um, tool altogether that it's just all mashed together. So, so merge visible, it's a new uh, thing up here. This one, is that the one? Is it the one? This one here. Okay, there we go. So now what I want to do is uh, I need to optimize this so it goes into Maya Clean. And I will do that with the decimation tool. Um, it's probably going to be the easiest way to handle it. So we'll do Z plugin, decimation master, and I'm just going to bring it down to at least 20k. This again, but this time I'm going to turn off uh, polygroups, make sure it doesn't have uh, too much information. Turn it all into one. Uh, Dynameshing this also can uh, speed up the process. So if it's all one shell, it's going to be easier to understand. So I'm going to get rid of the handlebars. I don't need the handlebars for this. That's an easy geo thing. Say Dynamesh, a little too simple. It's also split off the uh, Dynamesh is a little too low res. I'm going to pump it up to 5 to 12. Uh, okay, that's that's good. Uh, it's definitely the resolution is good. Now let's use the Decimation Master. Get down to 20k, see if it moves a little faster. Yeah, much faster. The, the shell system is just a lot easier uh, for my to process things. So there we go. Let's see what that looks like. Much, much cleaner. It's going to be really easy to bring that into uh, Maya. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and export into Maya. I'm just going to look at uh, anything that I might have missed as far as ZBrush. Uh, so, yeah, the one thing that I, I didn't say that I, I said in class that I would love to uh, anybody to learn about is if you are doing clothes for a human, it's a really easy trick. Um, for doing things where you really need the hollow of like a shirt um, or something. Uh, so if this guy, we wanted to like break off his shirt and we needed 
the sleeves to be hollow, we needed it not to be skin tight. Um, there's a really quick way of just isolating the, um, uh, the polys that you want to uh, turn it into the, the shirt and, uh, it, and extracting it. It's a sub tool, uh, tool called Extract down here on the bottom of sub tools. Works really, really easy. It's very user friendly. Uh, we just go down to Extract and say Extract. It looks at the uh, thickness that we gave it, 0.02, and now he looks like he's wearing a big sweater. It's probably cold up there, but it looks silly. So we'll bring that down to 0.002 and see what that looks like. It's about more of the thickness of a sweater. Uh, also got his knees there, but that kind of look cool too. So new uh, his pants and uh, this being a separate one, uh, just because there is uh, no polygon connection in between, that actually should give us separate clothes. But what happens is you hit extract and then you say accept and it pops it out as a separate geo. Then you can take this in and model on this. Uh, so that's great. But you don't actually need to sculpt all clothes to have an interior. Uh, something about games is we don't really ever show the inside of shirts. So we don't always need that much. But Geo, you, there's ways to isolate it because they're all separate subtools in the extract system, which is great because I can just delete the interior of the shirt. And um, if I am making clothes, I tend to get rid of all of the sides, but the sides that I'm sculpting on. So for example, this is all I'm really looking for. I'll sculpt that until I'm totally happy with it. And then I might extrude it and give it some thickness. But up until that point, um, it's kind of annoying to have the interior of the shirt. So, uh, but just wanted to show how easy it is to use extract. Um, for other things like dresses and stuff, I would make an actual kind of shell. Uh, it's one-sided, model it into place, and you can get a lot out of Clothing that way, just a single uh, sided uh, shell, model it as much as you can, and then when you're finally happy with the shape of it, then you will extrude it and give it some thickness. Okay, let's go back to the one that I had just finished, ready to bring into Maya. Let's export this into Maya and go over Quadra real quick. Sting Ray, this would be what I call the design sculpt because. Even though we did a lot of work, um, still just wasn't the cleanest uh, actual geo. And we've done a lot better job now. So let's import that uh, design sculpt into Maya. Let's go over the quad draw system real quick. Okay, and uh, I did make sure that everything was one subtool before I exported. That's something to keep in mind. If there's multiple subtools, it will break. All right, let's put it in uh, this layer, and then I can turn it to a live object. And I'm just going to go ahead, use the quad draw, start drawing directly on this. Um, uh, it's live. I'm going to turn symmetry on, object X, just because it is nice to see the uh, symmetry in the center. So um, this is going to go a lot faster than in the class because my computer is much better, but also. Uh, the uh, Decimation Master did a great job of really optimizing the system, so let's really burn through this. I want this uh, kind of, um, I guess I would say, long fuselage and wing to be stitched together, but uh, be able to uh, have really, really clean poly polygonal loop uh, between them so that there's a uh, very obvious uh, panel break between the fuselage and the wing. Some real quick uh, wonderful tools that the Quadra has to really speed up the process here. Uh, also this uh, or whatever you might call this is a separate uh, shell ZBrush and I want to make sure that we don't just uh, try to make it too smooth. We really need a uh, separator uh, edge there. So probably do first a uh, just a, a 
probably lying around it to keep that uh, cleanliness going. You can start to attach certain areas, add area, add geo when I need it. Something like that is a good start, but I do need a separator of the, um, the visor, like a, a little, um, yeah, little edge in between the visor and the fuselage, as well as I need a little edge in between the fuselage and the wing. It's going to give me a nice clean high res mesh. So, good start. You can see this shape. It's a little funky, but I'll figure it out once I get most of it made. And then the um, wing itself, I can just go ahead and kind of do it on its own. Uh, it's going to be a little easier if it's on its own because then I can, I don't have to worry about matching the polygons while I'm trying to design them. But I will find that the um, overall flow has to get figured out at some point. Ends up being really easy uh, because this model is already made, and I'm just kind of creating the volume mesh of it, and that helps me design the uh, polygons at the same time that uh, uh, without having to, to struggle with the form design at the same time. This is, just makes things move way, way faster in the world of modeling. I know what my form should look like. I'm not doing my form modeling and my poly uh, design layout of my where my poly should go at the same time. Here you can see this area needs a, a little separator so that we can get that angle between the kind of exhaust edge and, and the wing being separate. You don't want to get it too close together or else they snap. an appearance if I'm ever demoing. Okay. My cat, she's awesome. She's gonna help out. Okay, my copy. Stitch these two together, didn't want to do that, so I'll just delete the geo. Now I get the corners right. Okay, so I did this in class, and I'm not going to go over entirely uh, everything, but I did want to just show how we begin the, um, the high res sculpt. Uh, this is going to be the final high res. Not the low res, but the high res because I can I can really deal with a very uh, beautiful clean model uh, if I get to control every polygon. It's just going to make things work really, really uh, much better. And what I do is I first kind of just get the rough outline of, of the uh, shapes that I want, and then eventually we're going to look at it smooth. Uh, that is like hitting three on on the keyboard just to see what happens when you smooth. Uh, and that's when we can kind of forget the sculpt underneath and start thinking about the overall uh, design sculpt, or sorry, the overall like high res model as a finished product. And at this point, this is our model. So we'll start to really go in and look at anything that isn't working because of like say triangles. I'll try to look at the airfoil shapes, every uh, the, the edge flow line, everything needs to be clean and uh, kind of deliberately worked out, as well as uh, just having the right form that's going to be the real key in this. So uh, the one thing that I did in class that um, was a cool trick was if I 
was able to separate out my shells of the panel lines with UVs, so they um, wanting to make like this this panel line a different UV shell than the panel line next to it. What I can do is it uh, bringing it back into ZBrush. It'll be really easy to have perfect clean um, poly groups because of the polygons are separating the poly groups and doing it on a shell system rather than just a um, just visually with the ZBrush uh, control uh, tool. So uh, that is something that I find is, is wonderful trick. Uh, not too many people know about is utilizing the uh, UVs uh, to help understand or create your poly groups. Um, it's the only time I utilize UVs in the high res. Most of the time, the high reses don't need any UVs at all because uh, there's no texture other than we might use vertex paint and uh, ZBrush, which is purely a vertex system, not a UV system. There's actually no textures when it comes to vertex painting. So uh, there's all kinds of times where we don't use um, any textures uh, when, or UVs for a high res, but we might end up painting uh, with vertex paint. In an aircraft like this, I'm not painting with vertex paint. It's much easier just to use um, uh, substance painter materials to get uh, the look that I'm wanting. Uh, vertex painting is just a little too intensive, but if I'm doing something like uh, monster or human or anything that has a little more organic uh, texture that I want to paint myself. Uh, that is absolutely one of the use for painting. And it's very, very useful. Um, and then the other reason why it's useful is because it can be used to create poly, uh, not poly groups, but material ID sets. Uh, the way that we do in Substance Painter, we can use for text paint to create material ID sets. So, that's going to be useful when we get there. I'm still kind of working all this out. Uh, but that will also would be the reason why I'm creating polylines in between my panel lines. Because if I wanted a really clean uh, panel line separation, uh, a, a clean poly set, poly, uh, uh, you know, the edge flow, if that edge flow is clean, um, it's going to be a lot more likely that I'm not going to get stuff uh, like I got here where the uh, edges, they look good from a distance, but when you start to get close, they get a little wiggly and it's not a clean cut. Uh, so that is because I didn't have full control over my, uh, my, my polygons because ZBrush doesn't give you full control. You get pretty far, but there's like a limit, so that's why... I love to uh, actually utilize Maya for the um, the the um, actual polygon uh, affecting. Okay, so clean is good. Uh, square quads is good. Uh, also, probably going to have to deal with edges, like uh, edges here. Say this this triangle corner major issue. Usually what you want to do is a more of like a, um, a little uh, quad a rim around anything, especially when it's turning really hard. So this this is going to be an issue. So I can kind of delete uh, maybe uh, this one or maybe I just pull it up and add some more. Yeah, that, that actually will work fine. I'm going to add some more here. Uh, but it, like a quadded edge is going to look a lot better when we smooth it than a, a weird triangle hitch edge. So let's see, something like this. Although we still have a triangle there, so we got to kind of pull this uh, line up a little more. And that's one of the trickiest things when I find with, with edge flows, is I want an edge flow to continue, but sometimes they get a little too close together or they... they, they uh, they feel like they're wasting space because they're too tight. And that's one of the reasons why Z remesher will not be a very optimized system because it doesn't really know where poly should go and where they shouldn't go. So I uh, recommend 
really uh, taken some time to think about where these polygons uh, should go, what would be the best place for them to go, because uh, that, that first round is never, never, never you just you get it in, and then you work out what needs to be fixed. Right here, I, I would love this one. This one edge to come out right here. You can see it's been buried somehow. He's up with that. No, there we go. Okay, so there, this quadded edge loop. I want to bring that all the way across the aileron so the aileron does not have um, a weird triangle on the edge of it. starting to look much better. Eventually I will need to triangulate something because these just get a little too tight, um, although it doesn't look as bad as I was thinking it would. Uh, if you can adjust them so that they they come together and everything's smooth and concentric, great, but if you do need to triangulate something, what I recommend is triangulating it where it doesn't affect anything, like in a flat plane area or in a corner that it, nobody's paying attention to. Because uh, if you try to triangulate and you are on an edge that's going to be smooth, the triangulation will make the edge mad. It's kind of frustrating. All right, I'm just going to spend another five minutes on this. Call it a night and load it all and watch out for aliens they're coming for us uh, if they're not I'm gonna be really disappointed and I'm pretty sure it's not really aliens but someday we can hope and X-Files really prepared me to believe that everything was gonna be aliens and now uh, nothing's aliens we still haven't seen any real aliens or maybe we did and everybody just thinks it's a joke So just like we did for, you know, quad draw with the cannon, quad draw with the uh, LOD zero and everything, we can do that with the high res, get our mesh to be exactly how we want it to be. And then uh, the real trick is uh, how do we uh, uh, make sure that it is smoothing. And so what I'll do is I'll turn off, let's, let's get the wing all the way to the tip, but I'll turn off uh, the, the high res design sculpt and at a certain point, we never look back at that one. We just start uh, fixing all of the things that we need to fix on the final, and uh, we just leave that one behind. As long as our shapes are, are not broken or we're not doing anything, we're breaking our mold or our form, uh, then we can um, turn off the uh, the design sculpt and start working on this if is, as if it's its own piece. And that's when I start looking at like, okay, what are the edges that are not clean? What are the things that are zigzagging up and down? What is, what is uh, not looking right when I smooth it? So I'll just go in and, and do a lot of work here on making sure that uh, this is a clean mesh. And we can hit three on the keyboard to see what it looks like when it's uh, smooth. That's going to give me a lot of uh, hints at what uh, edge lines we, extra edge lines we need, and then also what uh, just uh, um, any kind of ugliness, any kind of rippling or darkness that looks wrong. We'll go in and fix it because this is what our final model will look like. So it's a good place to start. Um, again, I, I had mentioned uh, in class there was a way that we can separate our UVs and that'll help with our polygroups. Very easy system where basically I'll, I'll do it really quick and simply with just one edge uh, so that we don't, so I can get some sleep tonight. But the, um, 
The idea here would be that, say, I want this middle piece to be a separate UV than the outer piece. Um, well, first off, we need one UV over everything. Just scoot that off to the side. Then I want this panel to be a separate piece. Actually, let's do it with this panel because this is our separator. And then uh, we can make that a separate UV. We don't even have to unfold it or anything. It just needs to be a separate UV shell. Uh, that way, when we bring it into ZBrush, We'll call this the high res cage. Uh, that's what I call the um, models that, are, that will be mesh smooth, but they are not um, uh, fully uh, mesh smooth yet. Um, also, there's just a lot of messiness I want to fix with this. Everything should be clean. Everything should be quad and clean as long as the panel lines are in the right place. Uh, I'm going to spend a lot more time on this, but uh, I'm just going to move on show this one little trick where we bring in the um, high-res cage, and uh, I wanted to separate the polygroups, and that is done when we go to polygroups and say auto groups with UV, separates these out, and now I know this thing will smooth, it'll divide, we just divided that one polygroup. Uh, we divide the whole thing, and uh, when we delete the lower, we still have the separate edges. And I can even go in and do the whole thing I did before with a Z modeler and extrude. It's right clicking on the poly and saying extrude polygroup island. And now we'll have a much cleaner polygroup uh, separation because I modeled it myself rather than letting ZBrush try to deal with it. Uh, there's uh, some obvious issues with it at the moment. Uh, but that just means I need to clean up uh, this whole area. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, take a break, and we will meet up next week. Let me know if you have any questions, any issues. Uh, just hit me up on Teams, and I can't wait to see your projects next week. Um, we will be doing more demoing next week. I will look at uh, your progress, and, uh, and nothing is exactly due. We are still working on our high-res model for another week after that. Uh, but I would love to see your progress, and uh, ooh, I just messed that up real bad. Try to extrude everything. Um, anyway, uh, have a wonderful uh, rest of your day, whatever you're doing.